thank you for this uh, evening, and uh, thank you for the chance to come study your word in great detail and just extract uh, many, many morsels from uh, the pages of the Bible. Lord, uh, Holy Spirit, we pray for uh, your wisdom and understanding, because without you, uh, there is no understanding. And um, we, uh, we bind up uh, any uh, pearls and spirits and yes. spirits yes. of division. Yes, every hindrance. And uh, we cast them out. In Jesus name. Mm -hmm. Lord, we just uh, pray for uh, a free discussion of ideas and... Uh, and no, um, and no snappiness when it comes to difference of opinions. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. He said we're going to be in Daniel 10. So right. if everybody wants to open that. And oh, okay. oh, that's a good one. Michael can maybe start. Oh, that's right. We'll just start fantastic. reading it or something until he comes in. Yeah, there you go. Before we start, I got a uh, testimony. Um, uh, for the past uh, few months, I've had some issues uh, with my uh, left ankle. Um, I've been putting way too much weight on my ankle. Um, I've just been leaning mo mostly over to that side. Uh, it's especially uh, a lot of pressure on the outer uh, ankle and heel. Um, I've been through. I've been through about. A, a few weeks of therapy, it's, it's really helped, but uh, you know, I've, I've still had a fair amount of soreness um, on my uh, on my ankle and heel. Well, this past Sunday, I was at uh, Harvest Chapel in Abbottstown. And, so was uh, I. Oh, really? Yeah. Go ahead. I'll yeah. <laughs> and uh, after worship, uh, Pastor Don came up and said, uh, the Lord... Uh, wants to uh, do some physical healing, so if you have a physical need, step out in the aisle. I did. Uh, three people uh, prayed over me. Uh, they had no idea why, what my healing issue was, but he prayed any, but they prayed anyway. Then an elderly gentleman came up and uh, said, uh, so what's wrong? And I said, it's my ankle. And he says, well, if you believe uh, God is able to heal you, he'll do it. Do you believe? And I said, I believe. And um, you know, at that, and at that time, I could definitely feel something uh, supernatural happy. I felt a warmness uh, down there. And uh, I can honestly say my ankle is fine now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's the week for ankles. <laughs> yeah. Amen. It's the week for ankles. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. I bet you Dave is praying for you. He's my mother-in-law. Yes. Take us in our ankle right now, Drew, and pray for Sister Jane. Okay. Okay. Any particular side? Mm -hmm. Yeah, this one has the screw in it. You can see where it's pumped. Yeah, cut okay. and, and then there's a rod that runs up from the back of my heel that up through the center of my foot. And I think they pounded it in my bone. Oh, Lord. Mm -hmm. yes. Lord. Jesus, Lord. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. I uh, take authority Jesus. over all physical pain. Lord, in the name of Jesus. 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 And uh, Lord, completely Lord. restored. Yes, completely restored. Yes, Lord God. Mm -hmm. I believe yes. that uh, you can transport Lord, these rocks and heads. That's right. In the name of Jesus. 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 Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. There will be some amazing awards. One day, 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 one that's what I was just going to, I was, yeah. I was going to say to you, it's fading, it's not as dark as it was. That must have hurt. Oh, yeah. Those are heavy. You see that? <laughs> I did see it, that's why I yeah, got to my Yeah, it's like here, it was darker. Well, we'll just rub that. 
all Somebody over. was late. Uh, yes, in the name of Jesus. <laughs> yes, and we all noticed. Right. Get him like he get you. <laughs> We're going to get you. No, you need not that. I must be back my father's business. We know. I'm going to turn you up. I walked out here a couple minutes before seven to get a bathroom, and a black sister come walking down the hallway, down by, and she glanced over at me, and she said, hi. The Lord started speaking things to me. I was back in the bathroom and he said, go seek her out. So I find her dying right in the corner. The Lord prophesied right down the line. Mm. Amen. And I uh, just told her about calling to the ministry and thus and thus and so on. And, and uh, anyway, he said she could sing and so forth like that, you know. Mm. And, and she got all shook up. She said, what are you, a prophet? You know, I said, that's what they call me. But anyways. Um, Was she the skinny one or the, the heavy one? Said, Lord Lord said, bring two tapes Sunday night to sing. So she's coming oh, Sunday Lord night God. And, and she's going to be singing some songs for us. Amen. So we say hallelujah. Praise God. And he also, uh, just a while ago, uh, the man's name was Ron and the woman's name was what? Diane. Diane. She led them to the Lord and they said they're coming Sunday night. So I say hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. So how many, how many believe we must be about our Father's business? Amen. Praise God. And uh, so if everybody and their brother would get out and just all the time talk about the Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, so anyways, hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. God's doing some great things and we have another great testimony. Uh, tell, tell everybody, in case everybody don't know what happened Sunday night, we had a, a large bill and I told Sister Joan that Oh, I almost forgot about it. Uh, I did. She said a couple of times about when we get any offerings in, the first thing goes out is what? Wings of eagles. Yeah. Well, we got back and it's pretty close to what? It's, but it's, it's probably closer to maybe six. I mean, by the time I haven't got it all in yet. And he. Uh, yeah. But anyway, we're going to tell them what happened because so she called me on the way home. We, well, they, um, uh, Dave and Roxanne. Okay. They come up to me later and said, how much are you behind? And I said, phew, I said, Ray, at this point, it's 452. But I said, I have some entries I haven't made yet. And uh, and that he said, whatever it is, we'll pay it. So say amen. Hallelujah. That's yeah. the third time that we've had a super big bill that uh -huh. we were right, like Dave said, right to the edge. God always yeah. seemed to take you right there yes, to the very edge. Then before you... Right. Question, why does God do what he does like he does? What is the reason behind it, anybody? Because he wants to know if we're going to believe him, if we're going right. to trust him, if we're going to use it to the end. It's a test. Mm -hmm. It's a test. Yep. Yeah. Do, do we really him love him? Yep. Do we really trust him? How many of you know he proves himself by what? What's the three things? Signs, wonders, Signs, and miracles. Wonders, miracles. Yeah. Let me say amen. Yeah. This thing's got a ring to it. Hallelujah. Uh -huh. I'm trying to watch my voice here. I don't know if I can watch the voice all the time. What we want to do tonight, and, and I wanted Brother Michael to go ahead and teach, but I hadn't got back with him on that, and I wanted Sister uh, Annabelle. Annabelle to teach and so forth. But, well, I, had a, I had a lesson prepared, but I can do it another time. So we'll, we'll have to do it another time. Sure. So I, I didn't know if you had it or not. Is that better for Humphrey? Yeah. But what, what I'm going to say again is what I said before, and I know it offends people. There's all kinds of people that come to our ministries every so often, but it's not faithful. I'm not open the, the pulpit to them. So I'm going to say amen. Yeah. Amen. I'm not just letting everybody, anybody and everybody come in to their horn. If they're not faithful and so forth, and I can see the fruits of the labor, they're not getting up there and doing it. Uh, I've gone on all these years, 37, 38, whatever years it is, I've seen so much of it. And I, the day as I was laying in the house praying, the Lord brought him back to me in a home church. He's not nameless. But he taught Sunday school for years. And uh, but he never came to church Sunday night, midweek, or nothing. And most of the time after he got done teaching adult Sunday school class, he would leave. I heard the pastor many, many times about it. Thank God he finally gave the gave the job up. And actually the pastor's given up the ministry too. But how many people did I say to them in that church about being faithful in church? And they say, well, Brother Bud's not faithful. He only comes for Sunday school. And he don't always come to that. 
How many of you know that's a no-no? Mm -hmm. And I had younger people say these words to me. Well, Brother Bud's going to heaven, so if he's going to heaven, I don't have to go to church either. Mm -hmm. Now, how many of you know the word epistle, mm -hmm. the letter, read of all, read of all men. men? So what we do, and I have to talk to my son here, because my son, he's, he's like a gypsy. He's always finding fault with every church that, that he goes to and so forth. So I did not know he told his mother this here on Saturday, that uh, this, the church bus is coming up and I pick the kids up and they're going to sit in the church. He'd been going to that church, a really nice church, but now he finds fault with that church. And how many of you know that's a stinking no-no? And I want to tell Terry this. Terry, your boys are going to be nine years old today. You're going to be nine years old, and how many of you know Dad is setting a real good, real good bad example mm -hmm. for the kids? Because mm -hmm. if Dad ain't going to church, what's he telling the kids? Mm -hmm. You don't have to go to church. Come on, talk to me here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, I'm very, <coughs> very much so on faithfulness. If a person is not faithful, I don't have no goods for them. Somebody say amen. Because if you're not faithful, you can't be strong. But what we want to do, we want to go back, and the Lord dealt with me about this here. About, how many of you remember what the message was Sunday night? What was the message about Sunday night? Uh, fasting. Fasting? Nope. Uh, yes, it was fasting and prayer, but, but where did we come up? What was the title of the message, Sister Joe? Here we go. Should we call me? I don't have it wrote down at home, but it's not with me. It's just Pastor Dad. <laughs> I helped write it down, and I can't remember the name of it. Because you said it so fast, I couldn't remember what it was. Yeah. We both had to get bits and pieces. We're like, what did he say? I leaned over and said, what was the other part he said? Yeah. We just totally... I just wrote fasting and prayer. It is chastising. Chasing ourselves Chasing. before God has to Chasing. do it for us. Yes. Everybody say, chasing ourselves, chasing ourselves. Chasing ourselves. before God, God has to do it for us. Okay, now, I want to, we want to go into this tonight, but I want everybody to be free to come up with all the things that you feel that we all need as a body of Christ, not only here, but around the world, but what things we really need to chasten ourselves to. We want to go back to Webster Dictionary. Chasten, to correct by punishment and suffering. That's what Webster says. Chasten means to correct by punishment and suffering. Does God chasten his people? Mm -hmm. yes. Absolutely. To chasten by, by uh, punishment and suffering, to, now listen, this is what Webster says, to make one a discipline, to make one discipline, to make one discipline, to make one discipline, to yep. make one discipline. Where do we get the word disciple? Discipline one. From the word discipline. So when somebody said they're disciples, what they're saying is they're disciplined ones. Mm -hmm. How did they become disciplined? They had to be corrected by chastening. Yeah. To become obedient. <clears throat> then he, Webster says to purify of all excess pretense and falseness. Oh, that is powerful. Mm -hmm. To purify of all excess pretense. Somebody tell me what pretense means. Excess pretense. What's pretense? Come on. Is that like your, um, your, um, like your, your thoughts and your ideas of what you want to no. do or accomplish? No. There's a song back when I was younger. I'm the great pretender. That's what pretense means. Yeah. Pretense. In other words, he says pretense and falseness. Pretended. So we're going to come up with a word called hypocrite. Isn't that what Jesus really rebuked him about? Mm -hmm. Being a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. You pretend you're righteous and holy. You act like you are, but you're false. You're liars. Okay, you're outside. Go ahead. A synonym. I just looked up the synonym. Pretense, make believe. <clears throat> See, hmm. I always thought it meant like intentions. I didn't. So what's it saying? <laughs> to make, uh, to purify of all excess, make it believe. How many of you know huh. people go into a church service and they 
music playing, and they'll go like this here. Raise your hands. Holy, holy. Mm -hmm. But it's not coming here. And they don't do it until they see you looking at them. Exactly. So how many of you know it'll automatically happen if we have a relationship? So I say amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. I I find myself, I don't know how many times in a day I, I tell my wife I've been in the years, I love you. Over and over and all day long I find myself doing the same thing with the Lord. I love you. It, it just all night comes out, I love you. So he says to purify the purify the all access pretense. Putting on an act. And falseness. Falseness. Then he says, the next thing Webster says is to refine. What's to refine? Purify. Purify. Yeah. In other words, once we think we're really pure, then the Lord shows us something else. Yep. Mm -hmm. he turns we up keep the going fire. back to the fire. He turns up the fire and brings a dross to the surface. Mm -hmm. How many of you ever, through your Christian experience, you got to a place where you thought, Feeling pretty good, you feel pretty good, and, and all of a sudden the Lord dirty. purifies you again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you now you find out, slam. oh my, mm -hmm. now where did this come from? Yeah. Jimmy Swagger said many years ago, he said, The closer you get to the light, the more imperfections you'll see. That's the truth. This white shirt here looks really white to y'all, but we you put it underneath the brightest light here, you'll see this shirt's got all kinds of fuzz and all kinds of stuff all over. Mm -hmm. So I say, Man. Amen. So he refines us yeah. until we're made like him. Now let's continue on. This is what, what the Lord laid on my heart about chastening, chastisement. Chastisement and chastening is always done with correction as the goal. Listen. Chastening and chastisement is always done with the with correction as the goal. A better man. So we say amen. Amen. So when somebody goes to a prison, why do they put people in prison? Teach them a lesson. Correct them. Well, that is the right. correction. Yeah. Yeah, that's why they call them a correction facility. Right? Correction facility. Right. Yeah. With the intent that when they leave, they'll be what? Oh, well, they'll straighten up. Straighten up. Because they don't want to get back in there. Why has God, through all the years, from the Old Testament all the way up, had to chase <coughs> correct his people, punish his people? Why? Just to kill them? Or just yeah, to be mean? Get in line with him because no. that don't mean he don't love us when he chases us. No, he does love as, us. As yeah. many as I love, I, chase I rebuke right. and chasten. Be no. zealous, therefore, and repent. That's I read great. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Okay, let me stop there. As many as I love, I rebuke. Mm -hmm. How many of you have ever been rebuked by somebody? Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. How yeah. many of you know if you get a rebuke from somebody, it don't go over good? No. I don't think anybody likes getting rebuked. No. Nobody so likes corrected. No. Rebuke. He says, rebuke. Tell me what rebuke is. Reproving, it's um, just correcting somebody, it's lecturing, telling them they're wrong. Right, exactly. telling them they're wrong. It brings their faults to the surface. Yeah. Right. Exposure. Right. Well, um, I would think maybe it has more to do with uh, pushing them back. Like when you say to Satan, I rebuke you, I mean, you're pushing it. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says reprove, yeah. rebuke, rebuke, exhort, right. all long suffering, and doctrine. Yeah. Reprove, <coughs> rebuke. Right. Reprove is you're coming up to somebody and say, you're wrong. Mm -hmm. What you said, what you done, what, whatever it is, you're wrong. You're wrong. <coughs> rebuke is it's a hard score. Webster says it's a scoreful scolding. No, you're getting mean. You're getting chewed out. Did you ever get around somebody that just flat out just left a fly and just chewed you up one side and down the other and just told you just exactly as it was? And you couldn't get a word in it. It was that you knew they was right. Reprove, rebuke. A hard, 
trick I stole him. Reprove, rebuke, and exhort. What's the thought? That's building them up. That's encouraging them. Help them. Help yeah. them. Exhort. Help them. With what? All long suffering. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, you get fed up. Anybody get fed up with somebody and after you improved them and that work them, you rebuked them, you fed up with all long suffering. And now you don't say, this is what I think about it. No, don't. This is what God's Word says about it. Right. I am telling you, you don't need to do that anymore. Well, is that you speaking or is that the Word of God speaking? Everybody still with me? Mm -hmm. So this is why I stress so much, stick with the Bible. If you stick with the Bible, you ain't going to have any trouble. Not to say people won't try to start trouble, but you'll never have to get reproved or rebuked or anything like that because as long as you preach the Word. So this, this is the things that are laid in my mind. Chastisement chasing is always done with correction as a goal and better and better. Chastisement and correction, now listen, is forced discipleship with the intent to change. One more time. Correction is, is forced discipleship with the intent to change. How many of you have had kids? Mm -hmm. How many of you are threatening your kids with chastisement? Mm -hmm. If you don't line up, yeah, I'm going to pull this car over and. <laughs> yeah, you do. Come on, done. Oh, you got to. On that note, my son kept refusing and refusing to stop listening to the worldly music when he was a teenager. And his cousin made him copies of tapes. And when I found them, I made him burn them. He says, but they're not mine. You know, they were his. And we made them destroy them. Well, I borrowed his car one day. Lo and behold, his gym bag was in. He needed it brought to school. And the Lord told me to check his gym bag. And he had another whole pile of CDs in there again. Mm -hmm. And you know what he said to me? I told him, I said, you're destroying them. He said, but they're not mine. I said, too bad. You're going to have to pay the other kid it. for them then. I said, we told you not to do this. Right. And the end result was, I said, why did you do this? He says, I wanted to see if you really cared. Mm. Uh, see, that, yeah. I want to see what? If you really cared. And if that I, really spoke loud. My son. I put him out because he was drinking from all, all caps and this and that, so when I was in that nation, come back from there, and he, he didn't know I was in the basement. And he, I could hear him screaming at her. He's like 16, 17 years old. <coughs> little woman, I'll, I'll punch you in the mouth. I'll, and I out there, stepped away, and I grabbed him, and he was tall. I grabbed him, and I mean, I kicked him against the wall. And he come back like this and said, go ahead, boy. I said, swing. I said, you swing, and I said, I'll knock you down, you won't get back up, and so forth. And he backed off like this, and said, I mean, I'm screaming him. Mm. This is your mother, she's not a little woman, and so forth. And you're going to act this way, and as long as you live in this house, you're going to be obedient, and this and this, and so forth. And if you're not, his girlfriend said, her. And I said, you're out. Mm -hmm. I said, make up your mind. You either obey God, remember Jeremiah, as far mm -hmm. as for me and my house, yeah, we're going to serve, serve, serve God. I said, if you're not, you're out. And I said, when you're out, you don't come back. You never come back. Mm -hmm. Well, he left. Well, all the neighbors got their nose into it and said, your dad's not but me and so forth, you know. And, and you had every right to leave and all this and that. So, anyways, she turned me still on my guns and my money and, and uh, mm -hmm. our antiques and all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff, you know. But after he was out on his own, the neighbors finally told me what he said when he started criticized him again. Terry got mad and started crying. I said, no, the reason my dad treats me the way he does is because my dad loves me. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to say amen. Absolutely. So, love is action. Yep. Can somebody say that? Love is action. Love is action. If, if you love them, you're not going to school. Come on. Right. If yeah. you love them, you're not going to compromise. But That's right. So once that more, let's go back and read that one more time. Correction is forced discipleship <clears throat> with the intent to change. Forced discipleship. Pastor Deb was forcing this thing. Mm -hmm. 
You brought this junk into my house, mm -hmm. and I'm not only going to burn it, but you're going to burn it. Mm -hmm. And you're going to line up. Mm -hmm. Little did she realize that inside, he's wanting to see how really it was. Our daughter, I literally sat on her. I straddled her in bed. She tried to run away. She said, you can't keep me here. I said, oh, yes, I can. I said, you're going nowhere tonight. And I straddled her, and I gave her the lecture of her life. Oh. And I booby-trapped the whole hall down the steps, and I knew she wasn't going out over her porch roof, which is a tin roof, and I slept downstairs that night. I said, you're not going nowhere tonight. And then we wow. dismantled her car. <laughs> Wow. But how many of you know when you're in a position <coughs> that you have to correct, people don't necessarily like you. No, I know. No. Oh, I guarantee you. You get, your, your name gets around real fast how cruel and mean mm -hmm. you are. Yep. And one of the first things that comes out of a kid's mouth is, you don't love, love me. me. You hate me. Uh -huh. Or I hate you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I hate oh. you. So this is we should get into. Correction is is correction, chastisement and correction is as the goal of betterment. Chastisement and correction is forced discipleship with the intent to change, to change what? Our lifestyle and our actions so that we would live a life and a life that we should. It's to change our lifestyle and our actions. How many of you know, if you've been taken to the woodshed, you're going to walk a little bit different? Mm -hmm. Somebody say that. Mm -hmm. It'll change your lifestyle and your actions. You get punched in the mouth once or twice, you ain't going to be so quick to open up your mouth again. So I say, man, my son, when he was real tall, he came into the house one day and so forth, and he was like trying to boss his mother around. Remember, Terry's real tall. He's like six foot four, and he's trying to boss her around so forth, but he's doing it in a jokingly way because I'm there. And she said to him, "Terry, knock it off before I put you on the floor." And he didn't call her old woman. He said, "Old mom, don't talk to me." She said, "Terry, stop it." And he's going over and you know, pushing on her like this. She's standing over top of her and this and that. And she said, "Stop it, Terry." And uh, he, she said to him, she said, you don't believe that I can put you down here, you turn. He said, no, Mom, don't talk to me. She grabbed him and plopped him on the floor, and she was on him, and Terry couldn't get up. He was laying there like, <laughs> <done that too. laughs> he was in shock. Now, how many of you know, believe that the Holy Ghost gave so some special power? Sometimes you have to. <laughs> now, yes. I know we weren't arguing. No, not arguing. He just no. said, that Mom, God showed him. Mom, you can't put me down. Yeah. You know, but he wasn't like figuring, come on, Fargan. And I said, oh, yeah. I said, okay, we'll see. Now, did he ever come back any time after that, ever, want to see if you could bring that again? No. Uh, he learned by discipline, come on, actions. His size, there was a kid in our youth group years ago that, be, that bad mouthed his mom and belittled her and disrespected her. And I said to the kid, I says, come here. And I had him Whoa. lean in my ear. Yeah. And I said, come here. And he leaned in, and I dropped his sorry butt on the floor in less than two seconds. No, I, I'm down in Bible study. We're, we're in Bible study down here. And York. I said, you will never disrespect your mother in my home again. Mm -hmm. And everybody okay, thought we, I was we, And I said, size has nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. And I said, you will respect oh. your mom. Mm -hmm. The other kids were actually. Showed me how to do it, and he just was like in shock because he didn't want to do that. So, yeah. Okay, I'll tell you what to do. Uh, just cut it off and take it up to the farm and put it in the refrigerator. You know where that's at. Okay, uh, we've got to go to the Bible study, so I'll talk to you later. Okay, Okay, so let's continue on here. Correction is forced discipleship with the intent to change our lifestyle and actions so that we should live our life and lives as we should. So I say amen. 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 Am
So uh, let's, let's bring it into our lifestyle as Christians. What are some of the things that we need to change and become a disciplined disciple? What are things we need to uh, change? A lot of people who you hang out with. Okay. I, I, I think that I wish we had a blackboard. Because we, um, we write a You can get one of those little, I have those. A dry erase or a dry erase. I'm not talking about that. When I used to teach it, so well, I had the big blackboard to wipe off. So yeah, this wrote, that's what it will wipe off. It will wipe off. Like Only it's white. I'm like a little thing. I, I, no, yeah. big. No, I've got a bigger, I'll show it to you. Okay, but, so number one, we'd have to say, we have to change what? What, what did you say? Who you hang out with. Who you hang out with. So mm -hmm. we have to write up our, our company. Yeah. Haven't we oh, said that yeah. through the year? If, if God is going to use us by that, so forth, we have to choose our company very what? Carefully. Carefully. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Yeah. Something else, anybody? Yeah. Brother Michael. What, what are some of the things that... All of us Christians, I'm not talking about you, I'm talking about me and all of us. What is things we need to change? Bring under control, just discipleship. lines up with the company. Mm -hmm. Even the Bible talks about, how's that verse going there about uh, send anything before you and so forth like that. That's right. What our eyes hear, our eyes see, our ears hear and so forth. You know. <coughs> so, our surround, we, we have to do that. Mm -hmm. But, I'm trying to get to another point. I said Pastor Debbie tapping on her mouth. Has <laughs> any of you in here ever had trouble with your mouth? And I constantly have trouble with my mouth. Mm -hmm. Besides me? No. So it said to me yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. It happened so fast, we were going someplace, and I pulled out, using Hanover, I pulled out from the Lowe's, and I came out and made a wide turn. And traffic lights way back up, nobody's coming. And a girl came through it. Before I get back in my lane, mm -hmm. and before I knew it, my window was down, and I said, Watch your problem! Hey, John Peggy. And guess what she did? She said, I thought God got your attention. I thought you. No, I said, Hey, two wrongs don't make a right. And if, uh, if something would have happened, if it would have been a guy and he got out and was trying to fight with you, he would have said to you, Sir, you're in the wrong for putting your window down and yelling at him. No, it's the truth. But how many of you know I Some need like to it, take discipleship, discipline actions of myself? So I'm saying that. But it was so fast that the old nature yeah. man jumped up. No, can't make excuses. I know. I should have had that man buried a long time ago that he did not come up. But how many of you know if you're in the presence of God, he won't come up so fast? Yeah. That's why we have to do what? To our bodies. His word in our heart. Continually. Die daily. Yes. Crucify The reason I said John Hagee is he was at a red light. Yeah, I heard that. Yeah, I heard that. And yeah, he had the same issue at a red light. He started <coughs> wound the window down screaming, well, What color do you want, lady? And a woman pulled up beside him that came from his church that, and <laughs> said, Hi, Pastor Hagee. <laughs> he got found out and caught. But God catches us anyway. Okay. You know. <laughs> How many of you agree that our flesh is our enemy more so than what the is. devil is? Yep, it is. Yep. What is the things that we have to chasten our bodies and get in line so we get courage of God? What things must we be doing more of? Spending time in his presence. Yeah, praying. Talking to him, praying, communicating. Uh, yeah, we're praying for the gift of self Brother Michael, if you would, go, go, go to Daniel chapter 10 and read verse 12 for us. Okay. Now, uh, this is where we came up with this here. 
Daniel chapter 10, verse 12. It is so important. An angel shows up to Daniel because Daniel was doing something that caught God's attention. Are you listening to me? Yeah. That Daniel was doing something that caught God's attention so great that he sent an angel to Daniel. Mm -hmm. And he even lets Daniel know that what you've been doing, I'm sent to you because you're doing something. So you read that. That's right. okay. uh, so, uh, <coughs> then said he unto me, if you're not Daniel. Microphone. Sorry. Uh, then he said unto me. Let me interrupt. So when he said it unto me, that's an angel talked to, to, to Daniel. Okay, so an angel sent from God to, to Daniel. Right? Okay, then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that you set uh, thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for you thy words. Read it one more time. I'm going to break in as you read it. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand. Okay, so God don't wait for you to do something 20 years, even though it, in this case here, Daniel was fasting three, four weeks of sackcloth and ashes. But, but he says from the first day you started. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen. God took God's attention. Amen. So how many of you know if, if you're just going to go fast one day, <coughs> the first minute God's you're in God's attention. Yes. He's watching. So, so here he is, twenty one days. Go ahead. And to chasten thyself before thy God. And to chasten thyself before thy God. Mm -hmm. And how did he chase himself? What was he doing? Talk to him. Say chasten himself with sackcloth and ashes and prayer. Oh yeah. And make a supplication. Supplication means he's not just praying to God, he's he's making intercession for other people. Yes. For the nations. Yes. 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 See, he's not saying my name is Jimmy, 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 Jimmy. Mm -hmm. He's not saying that. My name is Daniel, 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 I want, I want, I want. No, he's in prayer, in supplication, in fasting, for psychological relations for other people. Mm -hmm. And he wants to understand these visions that God has gave him back the end time. So many times God speaks to us in a dream or vision, and we say, well, I just had a weird dream or vision. Well, he sure had some. Mm -hmm. But we don't take time out to fast and pray and seek God, God, what is it you're trying to show me? Mm -hmm. And people say, well, I don't get dreams or visions. Well, let me tell you why you probably don't get them. Mm -hmm. Because you don't pay attention to what you did have. Mm -hmm. Can I say that again? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why would God waste his time giving you dreams and visions if you don't pay attention to what you, he's already gave you? Right. Oh, I don't know if anybody's even listening to it. I hope somebody out there who's watching this film is paying attention. Things. God wants to speak to you. Mm -hmm. God told me many years ago, you tell my people these words. I'm more anxious to speak to them than they are to me. Yes. Mm -hmm. now, isn't that sad? Mm -hmm. God's more anxious to talk to us than we are to talk to him. But why should he try to talk to us and show us things? If we don't have time to take it to heart, mm -hmm. well, I had I had a dream the other day, you know, it, you know uh, didn't make much sense. So you know, mm -hmm. I, I can you know, I wash it up with mine. Mm -hmm. And God in His great love and mercy gives us another one. Mm -hmm. And another stupid dream, you know. Let's talk about some stupid dreams. Seeing fat cows come up out of the ocean, eating. There's, and meet the skinny cows. And says, come on. Yes, it was Where? That, it was that. Actually, that was the other way around. The yeah, skinny, skinny cows come up all the ocean. That's something Seven that Daniel five. gave the vision. That sounds so weird, don't it? Well, that was Pharaoh's dream. That was Pharaoh. Yeah, yeah. 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 But, but Daniel, after after all these years, and he's like 52 years old now, God starts to give him dreams and visions. And Daniel don't understand them. So he goes into fasting and prayer, so that's why that should show you to understand. And God gives you an interpretation of them. Mm -hmm. The angel comes and tells him what they are. How many of you know that means once we get serious with God? Mm -hmm. Everybody say, once you get serious with God, once we get once serious, serious with God, God, God gets serious with you. Yes. And then guess what? You gotta remember this. You get serious with God, the devil's gonna get serious with you. Mm -hmm. That's right. 
devil's going to do everything he can to stop you. Yeah, he's your bigger threat to him now. That's right. <laughs> and he, he will stop you if you pay attention to him. Can I say that again? Mm -hmm. Resist the devil and he'll flee. Well, well, resist means what? Stop paying attention to him. Mm -hmm. Too many people focus on the devil. The devil did this, the devil did that, the devil said this, the devil. But what did God say? People can't resist him if they don't draw nigh to him first, so he can draw nigh to you. That's right. Well, well and before him. that, it says, submit yourself, yes. therefore, to God. Resist yes. the devil, yes. and he will flee from and you. People so just jump to the resist. Resist. draw nigh to God, and he'll draw so nigh. So if you submit yourself to God, and you're in God's presence, you're in Psalms 91, so forth. Mm -hmm. the devil right here, you have to, but you're not paying attention to him. Amen. 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 We did first a gun club, and we first got married, uh, the gun club is just right down the road, and every Saturday and Sunday they they all you heard. Bam, 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 bam. And we first got married in Baltimore. Now I don't even hear it. Mm -hmm. People will pull in and say, "What's all that gun shooting?" I say, "What gun shooting?" I'm not even here. You, you know what I've done? My ears have blocked that out. Definitely. How I many you know you can get in God that your ears will tune the devil out? Yeah. He might be blabbing his lip, but you're on different frequencies, so his voice isn't coming through. Mm -hmm. I pray that over people. Their ears are deafened to the enemy's voice and open Amen. to hear the spirit Amen. of the living God. Amen. Because they're listening to too many voices. Mm -hmm. God has not gave us a spirit of what? Fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. Mm -hmm. So yep. fear comes from evil voices. Mm -hmm. In other words, if you have fear, a thought or a voice had to go in your head to plant fear in you. Mm -hmm. And we've all been there. Nobody yep. can sit there and say, that ain't me, no, you're yep. lying. Because we all entertain that evil voice, those evil thoughts, and put fear in us. I, had a, I told somebody just recently, I said, um, stop partaking of the devil's table and you won't listen and hear what the devil has to say. And when you do hear him, you'll laugh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they agree to the I don't think it believes lies, that's what I was saying. Uh, thy word.